All right, let's welcome Brian McGee with NixOS Factor, a declarative hardware configuration for NixOS. Hello, uh, my name is Brian. Um, I'll be your presenter today. I don't really give a lot of talks, and by a lot of talks, I mean any talks. So if this goes to shit, just think of it as me setting expectations low for everybody else. Um, so with that, before we get into it, a little bit about, about me. Um, my first computer had an actual cassette tape. It was an Amstrad CPC 464. I know I look too young for that, but um, my first PC had a turbo button. It would go from 33 megahertz to 66 megahertz. Um, so I've been doing this a while. I started my professional career writing Java for uh, real-time trading systems in investment banks, just as the world economy collapsed. Um, since then, I've deployed things in most, la most languages, most frameworks, front-end, back-end. I would say I'm full-stack-ish, um, or I think Jonas calls it a T-shaped developer. Uh, I've been working in Nix for the last few years. I was actually working on a project where we needed some ops help, and Numtai came in. Uh, Florian and Jonas turned up and started dropping these .nix files everywhere. And I had a look, and then I've been falling down that rabbit hole ever since. In my spare time, I uh, maintain tree format, or tree FMT. I'm, I'm not sure what the canonical pronunciation is. And I write the occasional blog post. So with that out of the way, let's get to the technical side of things. I'm calling this the bootstrap problem. Whenever you're using NixOS, and, and by the way, I'm assuming you use NixOS. Um, if you don't, you'll still get something out of this, but uh, you can examine your life choices later. Um, so whenever you're installing NixOS for the first time, you have to make some choices about the hardware that you're going to run it on. Those choices are really straightforward in terms of kernel modules, which the kernel will auto-detect a lot of things for you now. But it starts to become more complex with disks and network controllers and graphics cards and so on and so forth. You don't have to do this all by yourself. There is, there is a bit of help, um, and that's in the form of the little Perl script, NixOS generated config. I don't think it's possible to actually use NixOS without running this. Um, but what it does is it spits out a hardware configuration that it figures out by scanning your machine. And at a high level, it does about seven different things. It looks at if you're running inside of some kind of virtual machine, and it will enable guest things and different kernel modules and stuff for speeding up virtualization. It will ensure that your init RD has things like your USB controller, so your keyboard will work when you're trying to unlock your disk. It adds some config, depending on what kind of network card you might have. It will toggle some virtualization optimizations. It will attempt to preserve any kind of file systems or swaps that it finds, um, but typically you'll kind of change that later. It enables the HTTP for every network interface it finds, and it configures X11 if it's already running. So it gets you started. From there, you're not supposed to modify your hardware configuration.next, but we all do it. Um, the next step that most people arrive at from there is rather than trying to figure out all the quirks of your particular laptop or your particular machine, you might come across uh, Nixos hardware. What that tries to do is pull the collective knowledge of people that know better than you do, that have already figured out if you're running it on a framework 13 inch, these are the things you need to turn on, these are the quirks, these, and so on and so forth. For me, I just made sure I had the same computer as Mick 92, and then he figured it all out for me. Um, the next progression from there you might have come across is Serve OS, which is a similar idea, but more targeted towards platforms like Hetzner or AWS that tries to give sane defaults, like turn on things like cloud init, and so on and so forth. They all fall into what I kind of think as of Nix generators. Hardware, uh, NixOS, generate config, scans your machine, and it spits out some Nix. NixOS hardware is a bunch of people who are eyeballing your machine and spitting out some Nix. 
it's inherently static and it can be coarse grained in the case of Nixos hardware because you're, you're saying it's a framework 11th gen 13 inch laptop. Um, it's static in the sense that if things change in between 23 or 2405 and 2411, if an option has changed, you would have to go back and run Nixos generate config again and spit out the Nix. Um, but what's interesting about that problem is much of the underlying hardware doesn't change. Yes, if you stick a YubiKey in or pull it out, you know that might come up different. But your processor, your motherboard, all those things don't really tend to change. So what if instead of scanning the machine and spitting out some NICs, we just captured information about the machine and deferred all of those decisions later inside of NICs? That's what NICsOS factor does. Um, it's in two parts. One side of it is a Go program that scans your machine and generates a very detailed JSON-based report. And the other side of it is a collection of Nixos modules that we're currently building up that you could consider like a proof of concept. Because really from the Nixos side of things, it's just import from JSON. From there, we're trying to build up a bit of a framework around it, but we're still experimenting. So demo time. Uh, let's see if this works. Uh, I think I'll have to close my presentation. So if I can get it back. Should have had this done beforehand. So step one, I'm just going to run Nixos Factor on my machine. That's it. Thanks for coming to my talk. Um, so if we look at what that did, it's actually kind of hard to look to your right and do this. And I collapse all of that. What we end up with is a few things. The very first field is a version field because the idea is we're going to try and keep this stable, but at some point you might need to break it. So if we do, we want the Nixos modules to be able to gracefully deal with that. For now, it's just an auto, it's a monotonically increasing integer. Um, system, we capture that because it's important to know what system you're trying to target. Virtualization, we ported systemd detect vert into Go because I had these great idea it was going to be a static binary you could run anywhere. Kind of regretting that decision. I'm probably just going to go back to using systemd detect vert. But it's the same lo logic that tries to work out. Are you bare metal? KVM, Zen, container, so on and so forth. We then got the meat of what it does, this hardware section. We basically try and capture every bit of information about the machine that we can. And we also attempt to classify it to make it easier when you're writing your modules to filter different parts of the report. You can see here it's picked up various different things on my machine. Um, and at a high level, we, you can think of it as LSUSB, LSPCI, uh, proc slash CPU info, and a few other things that we basically just dump into a JSON file. Um, this then gives you a, a rich amount of information that you can use later on, uh, which I'll show in a, in, a, in a bit. We also grab the system management BIOS if it's available. And you will find some interesting vendor information in there. I find my desktop machine, whoever made the motherboard seemed to really enjoy whole garden because it was sprinkled throughout different parts. Um, so that's, that's the report. If you really want to dig into it, I, I suggest have a look on your own time because there's a lot there. Once you have the report, the next step when it comes to using it is pretty straightforward. You bring in the main Nixos factor mo module and you give it a path. That's it. From there, we can do some really interesting things. So if I just spin up the REPL, uh, hopefully this works. Uh, 
it is really hard to look almost behind yourself and type. Okay, so we've got this detective section. And, and this is what I meant by we are trying to build up some patterns on how to use this information, but there's nothing set in stone. This is where it's really up to you guys to start playing with it and see what makes sense. This is the pattern we have for now where we try and create a configuration space where we indicate what we detected, so then it makes it easier to reason about what we have turned on and off. I did an experimental debug section where I tried to capture all the config settings that we set. It works in the basic VM. It doesn't work outside of the basic VM. Um, Robert Hensing himself was even like, Does that, is that going to work? Turns out it doesn't. So, but eventually, we would like to find a way of helping you diff what we've turned on and what we've turned off. But if we look in here, we can see things like, because the report had a graphics card listed, we've turned on the graphics module. If I was to go inside of here and come on. remove that, reload, come back in, please work. Ah. Trust me, it works. Ah, OK, you wrote this module. Um, so trust me, if I was to remove the monitor section, it would work. But in the, for, the, for the sake of time and my heart rate, I'm just going to continue. Um, so that's, that's the basic theory. You've got the information within NixOS. And it lets you write modules. Here's the graphics module, actually, that Jörg was, talk, was talking about. So it lets you access the report itself from config.factor.report. And then you can do things like what we're doing here is we're setting the default value of the enable flag based on what the report, what, what we find there. And down here, then we can then say, if the graphics card has been enabled, we can turn on OpenGL. Or depending on the Nixos version, we can change what we're actually turning on. So over time, we can actually evolve these modules, but we're using the same report that was generated usually once. If you upgrade your RAM, you'll have to run it again. But you know it's rare that this would change. Um, and it enables, we're not quite sure what it enables. Like This is where we need to explore it. Um, another interesting thing is if you look at what Nixos hardware does, oh god. Shit. OK, let's not do that then. <laughs> um, in Nixos hardware, there's some examples where there's modules that import various shared Intel-related modules. All that logic can be removed and just be auto-detected. You can take some of the coarse grain modules that Nixos hardware is doing and make it more fine-grained. Um, and I would have shown that, but the demo effect. So that's kind of the basics. Um, I'm now going to try and restart my presentation. So bear with me. Christ. <laughs> oh, you taking the piss? Right, hold on. I'm just going to exit that and try this. Of all the times. Right. It's OK. Our heart rate's only in the triple digits. <laughs> Not that many people watching. Uh, thanks, I think. <laughs> um, Jesus. Please work. Ah. <laughs> right. So where do we go from here? There's a few things. The first one is stability and security. We still need to validate that we're capturing the information correctly. Even just last week, we discovered that we made some assumptions about 
the languages within SMBIOS. Turns out there can be more than one, so we fixed that. We've had other minor bugs like our Zen detection, which is why we might go back to system D detect rather than just doing it ourselves. We also need to validate that we're not leaking any sensitive UUIDs. I did my best, but you know there are smarter people than me that should probably look at this. Um, and that's, that's where the bulk of the work kind of is. The Nixos side of things is quite free and easy and breezy, and you guys can just mess around with it. The boring, laborious work is capturing the information. Um, but I did kind of cheat. So in the beginning when I was doing this, I had to look at LSUSB and LSPCI. I thought I'll build all this up myself and wrap them. And then I came across hardware info from OpenSUSE, and it did everything that I needed it to do. Unfortunately, it didn't output in a sane format. It's just got this textual output for the terminal. So I delved into Seago for the first time, wrapped it, created some models, and most of what you see is wrapping the domain model that Hardware Info has and just exposing it. We have some open PRs for some fixes where it misclassified some things, and it shows its age a little bit because it didn't have support for interface association descriptors in USB, so webcams weren't being detected. But we have those fixes in, and I would like to get them upstream. But unfortunately, they're not very responsive. I've tried a few different channels, and uh, even going so far as at Open Source Summit, I went up to their booth and was like, hey, do you know this guy? Um, so I don't want to harass them any further. If they're not interested, they're not interested. But if we can't get some more traction on getting those PRs merged, it makes sense for us to start moving away and re-implementing what it's doing so we have more control and it's, it's, ma it's maintained. Um, so that's maybe a bit of buyer's remorse with that, but right now it does the job. It gave us a critical mass of information that let us validate the idea rather than spending a year just building all that up. Um, eventually, we may be able to replace Nixos Generate Config with this if there's interest and there's traction. Um, much of the modules we've done right now are trying to replicate its behavior. There's some more features we would need to add to reach, par reach parity, but I don't think it would be difficult to do. We also think we should start integrating Nixos hardware. I think there's a lot of logic we can remove from it and just pull in bits and pieces from Nixos hardware based on what we detect. And it would allow more cross-cutting modules to be developed within Nixos hardware that just looks at specific vendors, specific device types, specific whatever, um, rather than having to target a model or a more coarse grain kind of approach. Uh, we would like to upstream this. So the general idea we had whenever we um, put this together was this should take about three months just to get working. By the end of six months, it should be stable. Within a year, we should transition this out of the NumTide org into Next Community. And by the end of the second year, if we've done everything right, it should go upstream, upstream. Um, that's the goal, but you know, there's a lot of things between here and there. And it's all down to whether the community actually thinks it's a good idea and how it kind of adopts it. So we'll, we'll see, but that's the plan. Um, I should say special thanks to the Clan Project. This was, they helped fund this in partnership with Numtide, which I forgot to mention I'm part of. Um, you can see the little logo in the corner. Um, yeah, without them, uh, it would have been possible. Well, it would have been possible, but you know, I like getting paid. So, you know, I was able to dedicate three months and actually get this off the ground. Um, and yeah, from here, it's, it really comes down to you guys and, if you want to contribute, feel free. For my part, I see myself as being responsible for continuing the really boring stuff with the Go program and getting the report correct. On the Nixos side of things, you can have as much fun as you want, but if you want to contribute to both, I don't have a problem. I'm happy to be air traffic controller and just you know keep the PRs merging. Um, we've got a matrix channel. If you want to chat, I got a blog where I write shit sometimes. Um, and I'm going to be at the hackathon. Uh, trying to fix touchpad support because we're not detecting it correctly. So if anybody has experience of that, please reach out. Um, and now for questions. So please be kind. And uh, 
you know, if you ask a really interesting question, when I speak to Jörg later, I'll have a really good answer for you. Um, so yeah. All right, if you have questions, I'll give you a microphone. It's okay if you don't, like. What do you mean it's okay? <laughs> the stream needs to hear it. Hi, thanks. Thanks for the talk. There is also the uh, Linux hardware project that this reminds me of, like this website where you can see scans of, of, yes. of hardware. And this seems kind of related. They also have this probe where, that you actually use to upload the scan of your device okay. to their servers. And I'm just wondering, the obvious question is, why don't you use their probe software, of course? Um, so the obvious answer it, would be, I wasn't aware it existed. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely, I, I will be having a look at it and, and seeing, because the labor intensive part of this is the scanning. And that's where hardware info was a way of getting some quick wins. But if somebody else is doing it in a more sustainable fashion and is going to take that burden on, I am happy to build on top of them rather than having to maintain it. So. So yeah, I'll be having a look. Uh, is this something that should be in Nix packages? Are there benefits to it being in Nix packages? Are there downsides to it being in Nix packages? Uh, does it help? make things better if it's outside and maybe people make modules that work with Next West Factor and they don't have to exist in Next packages. Like what are the ideas that you've thought about? Um, that's a good question and I would say probably a mixture. Um, we started it under the numtide org and that's why I want to get it under Next community as soon as we can because then it's, it's more of a community resource. Um, if it never makes it out of Next community, I don't think that would necessarily be a bad thing. Um, there's a reason we kind of do things like that because it lets you iterate faster and there's less overhead. Once it makes it inside of Next packages, you know, there's a, a slower iteration cycle. Um, but I think whatever makes sense to be upstreamed should definitely be upstreamed. And if it just sits in Next community, then I mean, a lot of good things are just sitting there anyway. So. Hi, thank you. Um, have you considered integrating uh, other information about, for instance, networks uh, that the host might be connected to? So, like uh, LLTP information and other things related to that. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think I think we could eventually do that. What What I'm trying to create a concept right now in Nixos Factor is the difference between intrinsic properties of the machine and ephemeral. So right now we do actually scan swap but we don't do it by default, and it's under the ephemeral flag because swap and file systems, that's the kind of things that you're probably going to change, and you'll probably use Disco for that rather than, you know, uh, and network information kind of falls under that. The, the report itself, we're trying to make sure that it is canonically sorted. You'll get the same report no matter how many times you run it. You know, there's a lot of work being done on that, and putting ephemeral stuff in breaks that a little bit, but I think we could we could definitely support it. And, and it, it really comes down to, we've gathered all the information and now we're trying to use it in NixOS. If using it there shows up some use cases we hadn't considered, we feed it back into the Go program. You know, and this is what I mean by, I went off for three months, built something I think makes sense, but it might not make 100% sense. And now we need to iterate on it. And that's why we want to keep it in the numtide org slash next community for as long as we can so we can iterate on that and then maybe at the end of two years it has reached nirvana and it is near perfect and we put it up in the next packages you know so but yeah it's definitely something i think we could do thank you Hey, you, I think you made a joke with BIOS engineers and Hogarten products. What is Hogarten? I did. I make that joke at some I, point. Hogarten. Ah, right. Yeah. So in the SM BIOS, mm -hmm. um, I actually would log into my machine and show it right here, but I uh, can't mm -hmm. get Tailscale to work inside the network here for some reason. Um, but yeah, there's 
some random uh, vendor. There's a vendor ha handle within SMBIOS where you can just stick any kind of strings that you want. And I find on my motherboard, I think it was a Asus ROG Hero 8, there was like default, default, whole garden, default, default. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's a bit random. I don't know if it was like an internal code name for the motherboard or something or... Ah, uh, okay. But yeah. Thanks. I'd like to say uh, last question, if that's okay. Oh no. Does it work on Linux 2.6? Um, I have no idea. Yeah, um, I'm just kind of curious about like, like Linux, because Linux changes over time. Does this remain stable, or does the Linux kernel impact the output of this report, et cetera? Um, I want to say not that much, but I wouldn't be confident in that. Um, that is a MIG-92 question, and I will consult with them later and get back to you. All right, so another, uh, give, give him a hand, give him another round of applause, please. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you very much.